What is up everyone? Time for the review. As you can see, um, if you've watched any of my videos, you can tell this is a thumper. This is a blackjack. Yes, now, for those of you who have not watched any of my other stuff, you'll say, what the heck is a blackjack? <laughs> what is that thing? Okay, well, a blackjack is, it's a type of impact tool, an impact weapon. Um, they've fallen out of favor in the last 30, 40 odd years because they're too effective. Not because they're not effective, but because they're too effective. Um, you know, they, uh, yeah, kind of get the looks here. This is not just any old blackjack that, um, you'd find in some, you know, China Mart, shooter magazine, self-defense supply, whatever. This is a Scott Foster custom blackjack. And, um, Scott and Todd Foster both, they're, they're the brothers of uh, Foster Impact Devices. They've been, uh, they've been making lead and leather goods since 2004, and it now being 2019, they've been doing it for 15 years. And um, yeah, their grandfather was a, was a railroad guy back in the 60s, and he carried these things for real life self-defense situations. Um, this particular one is an is a original design. Now, for those of you who haven't seen the movie The Legend of the Falls with Brad Pitt, Anthony Hopkins, etc. Um, there's a scene in there towards the end where Brad Pitt's, you know, he's he's running, he's running. It's prohibition time. He's, uh, you know, running booze across the border or whatever. Lives in Montana, and you know, a lot of that went on back then, back in the day. And um, there's a scene where his his lover gets shot, and he just he loses it and goes, you know, goes berserk and beats the crap out of a out of a couple guys. And they eventually get him down and stuff. And one of the characters pulls a blackjack you know, j almost exactly like this one and gives him a good whack right across the face and just takes the fight out of him and, you know, leaves him a sobbing heap as the villains drive off. So what Scott was trying to recreate, he was kind of trying to recreate um, a blackjack that you could see a bootlegger um, carrying and potentially using on on people that, that um, he had dealings with. So this model is kind of affectionately and tongue-in-cheek dubbed the bootlegger because it has kind of it's a very it's 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 not small I would say it's medium size but for a medium size blackjack it is very stout um, a lot of blackjacks and, and slung shots they kind of have a weight I would say between seven and ten ounces that's kind of a you know yeah they'll definitely work this one's 12 ounces I mean that's if my math is right that's three quarters of a pound of solid lead cast onto a medium flop spring. I'm, I don't want to do that too much because it's not good for the springs, but you know, it, it has a good bit of whip and snap to it, but it's not too much. So, and then as you can see, focus, there we go. It's covered in a thin leather. Now with the thin leather here, it's, it's really good leather, but um, you, you would see any type of imperfection or anything like that in the weave itself. And it's flawless folks. It is absolutely flawless. You can see here, um, a lot of blackjacks, they had either a stitched head or a woven head. This is um, my first and only piece of a stitched head from Scott. And I tell you what, it's like, yeah, it's like the tightest baseball you've ever encountered. He does a really good job. I, I, the, the amount of secrets this guy knows is for, in terms of leatherworking and blackjack making is, is really cool. I mean, I, I understand kind of the basic construction of these things, but... You know, just just the amount of you know insider information the guy has from dissecting all the historical ones he's handled is really cool. Um, let's kind of take a look here. Uh, this is a traditional kind of wrist thong strap, and as you can see, the leather on this is amazingly thick, and I love it because it'll wear well. It's not something that's gonna you know wear thin and then fray and then snap break. You know, in a few years, maybe. 30 or 40 years of daily carry. I mean, it is leather after all, but it's super thick. And a lot of people think they see these old billy clubs and blackjacks and stuff, and they think, oh, I, I put it on my wrist, and then I and then I have it right here. And yeah, you could do that, but that's not going to do anything for your grip. I mean, and if you do lose it, you do then have a, <laughs> you know, you have like, you know, 10 or 12 inches extra reach, but you have no control of the thing then, really. So what Scott advocates and what I... Um, also advise is you get what's called a roll grip here and it's very common in Filipino martial arts and if you're able to get your thumb in there and get a good grip look at that I mean it's it's essentially locked into your skeletal structure and you get that little butt there of woven leather kind of a knot and it does two things one well it does a couple things one it um, 
it terminates the leather braiding here. It gives you a handy knot to hang on to, and it also ties in this uh, really thick, chunky thong here. So that's that's really nice. And if you can get a good grip locked in on that, brace it kind of with your thumb, and man, that would just, oof, that, that would be ter terrible. Now, a little history on blackjacks, guys. Um, they're not popular anymore. In most locales, they're highly illegal. And some people say, well, yeah, that's because bad guys use them. And I say, well, yeah, I mean, bad guys have used these. There's there's still probably a handful of bad guys running around with these, but they're mostly extinct. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of a sad thing, I think, because they are so bloody effective. But, you know, that being said, they weren't banned by even police departments because they don't work. These things, I mean, 12 ounces of lead... Uh, about four or five inches from your hand being swung with you know any amount of adrenaline or fear you're gonna break stuff and um cops and security guys they had very strict protocols as far as what was okay or kosher to hit people you know in terms of anatomy you know anything you know connected to the spine the head above the shoulders was like lethal force and you better like he better be stabbing you with a steak knife before you do that type thing now i mean and then there were some there was some real, I don't know, bad egg cops or whatever that kind of ruined it for everyone because the MRI came out and people started showing like, oh yeah, that, that perp that got a love tap on his head, you know, he, he ain't doing so hot now. So slowly, locale by locale, state by state, they got phased out. Um, same with the flat saps. The flat saps, you know, I have another example here. Um, this is a Todd Foster um, sap, kind of his own design. But it's, it's a midget and it's kind of a small handy device. You can see that's flat. And the modus, you know, the, the way you're supposed to use these it was, it was a flat swat on collarbones, elbow joints, knee joints, ribs, anything like that. A lot of times they were used on the face or head because it was instantly effective. And I mean, just a, a, a medium strength tap or swat on the, on the face, head, whatever. Dude's going down and he's rolling around in the dirt for a while. Um, so these kind of overtook these in terms of police department usage. Um, and that was that was decades ago, and it went on for decades. There's a lot of old police police um, department uniforms where they had a specific uh, pocket sewn in the leg of the pants for saps. Blackjacks, however, they, they kind of have a darker history because you see that round cylindrical head. I mean, it's, it's, it's looking right at you. That is going to dent things. That's going to smash things. There's no dispersal of force there other than a small, you know, I don't know, quarter inch, maybe, you know, five, three eighths of an inch where it's contacting the human anatomy and it's going to, it's going to snap things. It's going to cause massive bruising and stuff. So yeah, these things kind of went the way of the dodo. You can still find old police catalogs from like the sixties and stuff where these are being sold. Now, this particular model here, again, I stress, is a kind of a, a loose interpretation or rather a stricter interpretation of um, a prop used by one of the characters in Legend of the Falls. And it's just kind of a, is an overall type of a, of a medium-sized yet very sturdy uh, weighted blackjack. Now, okay, so this thing here, um, made by Scott Foster, they're kind of they're kind of getting hard to come by and that's that's due in great part because the Foster brothers they don't they don't uh, crank them out like they used to three, four, five years ago and they're kind of slowing down, you know, and I respect that. I respect that a lot, you know, and they're they're hand making these things. They've made thousands of them over the 15 odd years they've been doing these and you know, to be quite frank, there there's with the with the blooming of social media and the internet over the last I don't know, decade there, the popularity and thing is just, you know, it's, it's easy to find and then, you know, groups happen and things like that. And they just, the popularity explodes and the two guys, they can't keep up. They can't keep working at that frenetic pace forever. They do this stuff on the side. They have, they both have full-time jobs and families and stuff. And, you know, it, it, I can't imagine doing as much as they have for as long as they have, you know, <laughs> and for the longest time for as little money as they get for these things. Um, there's, there's a handful of other makers out there and they, there are some makers that make good stuff, but in my opinion, nothing like the quality that these guys do. I mean, and they're not, you know, this is a weapon. This isn't like a novelty or curio. I mean, technically it's a collectible, but I mean, this thing, if pressed into service would function as well as, or better than any of the historical examples out there. I mean, and that's saying something because, 
plenty of good guys have old war stories and plenty of bad guys have horror stories of what these things can do. So anyway, guys, oh, before I uh, wrap it up here, let's kind of get the, the length and um, dimensions on these things. Gee whiz, long day. Okay, so we're looking at around eight inches there overall length, and I want to say it's about the same for this really thick, beautiful strap here. Yeah, that's about, that's about eight inches at the bend there. So it's roughly 16 inches overall length, which, you know, this folds up in your pocket. Over time, this will wear, and that'll be kind of the bend point there. And, you know, if you have to, you can just yank it out, and it's ready to go, and you don't need the strap. The strap just, if you have a half a second, you know, where your brain is still registering, oh, crap, you can kind of stage it, and then you're really locked in and ready to go for super up close and personal. Um, again, I... You know, you do what you got to do. These things are illegal. If you get caught with something like this on your person, chances are you're going to jail and there's no way you're going to talk your way out of it. Now, there's some states where if you've got a concealed weapon permit, it's a really, you know, constitutionally guided state in the, in the United States of America, you could be okay if you're not being a jackass with this. Now, if you're threatening someone with it down at the local watering hole, you're someone could shoot you and be totally justified or you could get handcuffed and thrown in the can and again be totally justified so um just don't be stupid with anything like this this includes automatic knives brass knuckles any of that you know naughty stuff that illegal stuff so um the weight on this 12 ounces i don't know if, yeah i already mentioned that so you got 16 inches overall length eight inches on the strap eight inches on the body medium coil spring here 12 ounces in the head very amazing very amazing uh, excellent quality i cannot recommend his stuff enough uh if you've got any of his work you know what it's about and same that that goes the same for todd's stuff too with the saps and the coin saps and things um there's just there's not a ton of quality out there like this you know and in my mind these guys are incomparable so anyway y'all i hope this review is helpful i hope it was informative i hope you i don't know like seeing the close-ups of this thing so Anyway, guys, take care. I appreciate the, the views and all the, the kind comments. Take care. Bye-bye.